Hey YouTube, it's Joe here, and this is another devlog for Full Court Heroes. It's been another pretty long while since I made a video, and there's a lot of stuff to catch up on with the game, including some pretty big accomplishments. Let me just preview the highlights real quick. Here's the things we're going to be talking about. Playtesting. One recent development is that I've had a small group of people helping to test the game, and I'm getting their feedback, and we'll talk about that in just a second. We have a Discord server. There's a link in the description if you want to join the conversation and follow the development of Full Court Heroes in a more real-time way rather than wait for me to make videos on YouTube. And I've done quite a bit of work with the team and player customization tools. I want to show you guys how those work. In fact, in this video, I'm going to create the newest of my default teams in the game, the Charlotte Stingers, using those in-game tools. So uh, stay tuned and I'll show you how that works. And finally, I want to briefly share with you guys my thoughts about where the game is at right now and what the next steps are. So let's get started. As I'm making this video, it's been about a week or so since I shared the game with other people for the first time. I started with my brother, who's been a gamer basically his whole life and likes to play lots of sports games. As kids, we played baseball stars together, tech mobile, double dribble, pro wrestling, along with all kinds of other games, like uh, not sports related, but for a while we beat Contra in two player co op mode once per day for I don't know how long we kept that streak going, but we had a lot of fun together. So I let him try it out and um, he found some problems, and after fixing those, I invited a few other people to the new Discord server I'd set up. And in there, I posted links to the pre alpha build and allowed those folks to download and play the game. I was completely overwhelmed by the response. The double entendre is completely intentional, too. Uh, they found a lot of things that needed to be fixed or tuned or tweaked. The difficulty is something that definitely needs some tuning. Overall, the game is just too easy right now. Some actions are a bit too hard to pull off in the game, though. Uh, there, These things are kind of expected given the game was in pre-alpha stage. Uh, there are some situations that uh, testers found where the game would get soft-locked and couldn't continue. and uh, Those kinds of things happen and they're, they're to be expected, like I said. But overall, it wasn't too horrible. And their testing has been extremely, extremely helpful. The other kind of feedback I've gotten has been very encouraging. I haven't heard from every single person who's downloaded the game, but those I have heard from, the consensus seems to be that the game is a lot of fun to play. I mean, I agree with them. I think it's fun, but it is honestly such a relief to hear other people say that. I can fix the bugs or tune the difficulty settings, but fixing those kinds of problems doesn't necessarily make the game fun. It's still very early on, but I've been so happy to hear from people I've never even met that say the game at its core is a lot of fun. A couple of people have recorded videos of full games that they've played and published those videos on their YouTube channels. I'll put links to those videos in the description. It's kind of surreal to watch other people playing the game. It's one of those moments like when I published the Steam Store page where I was thinking, wow, this is, this is really happening. Not directly for me, but it's also been really nice to hear such positive feedback about the music for the game. My oldest daughter, Zoe, composed the music. I think she's extremely talented, and I really enjoyed hearing from other people that they're liking the music too. I guess the last thing I'll say about all of that is that I really, really appreciate the folks that have volunteered to playtest the game. Their feedback and their bug reports have been amazing, and they're going to be a big part in making the game a much better end product. I mentioned that I've set up a Discord server. Again, the link to that is in the description of this video. If you have an interest in keeping a more day-to-day -day tab on how things are progressing, I'd really encourage you to join the Discord. I'd love to hear your thoughts and ideas, too, about Full Court Heroes. There's also channels where you can talk about projects you're working on, or talk about game dev topics, tips, problems, tutorials, things like that. I also want to show you guys the custom team editing tools that are built into the game. I showed some of them in the last devlog, but now I can completely create a new team using the in-game editors and get it to a playable state where I can play the game with that team in a matter of minutes, and I want to show you guys how that works. We're going to build the latest default uh, stock team that's going to be in the game, the Charlotte Stingers, and we're going to just go through the process of using those tools step by step and, and build that team together. One of the things you're going to need when you're making a custom team is some graphics. 
you need a team logo. I've got a sprite up here real quick, and we're we've designed a, a logo for the Charlotte Stingers and a little uh, graphic that I can put in the end court uh, at the end of each side of the court um, behind the basket. And those can go in your user folder. Right now it is in the user data on Linux. That's what I'm using. Windows looks different. It's in app data over there. And within that, there's a data folder and then graphics. And there's several things. There's court elements, court floors, team logos, ticker logos. And we drop those things that we want to put on the court floor in those court elements folder, in that court elements folder. Um, I actually created a, a new floor pattern that I want to use for the Charlotte floor and drop that in the court floors folder. And then of course we have the team logo and that can go in the team logos folder. With that, that's pretty much all the graphics what we're going to need in order to create this team. So we can go into the game and head into the mods and workshop option, go into the league. And this time you can see I've got some teams there and we're going to create a team which takes us to the team editor. It's blank, so we will set a logo, and that logo that we dropped in that Team Logos folder appears in the menu. We can select that. We can enter a city, Charlotte, and the name of the team, we'll call it the Stingers. And an abbreviation for how it's going to display on the ticker and things like that. And then kind of like a UI background color that appears in a few places. We'll, we'll choose a dark blue. From there, we can go into the roster. I'm just going to generate a roster and let the game just generate randomly some players to put on our team. It'll generate their appearances and their stats and everything. Uh, so we'll just use that for now. Then we can go to the uniforms. Each team has uh, four uniforms by default. There's the association, which is the default home uniform, icon, default away uniform, the statement uniform, and the city. Uh, all those jersey types are supported. You can add more, but those are the four that every team will have. And you can just choose the base color and the trim color for each uniform. So we'll make the association uniform like that. And icons, we'll make it a kind of a blue with a white trim. And then we'll uh, set the colors for the statement um, maybe like a, a purple color. Actually, I want the purple color for that jersey and the uh, trim, kind of like a, uh, a blue. And then the city, which is a lot of them are kind of a gray, um, a gray base. And um, then a nice highlight color. Uh, I think this, that shade of yellowish green looks pretty good. Maybe, maybe some bluer. I don't know. Yeah, we'll stick with the light blue. And that's the uniforms. And um, I know you guys haven't seen this. This is the arena editor. And you can edit everything about the arena, at least that is supported. There's some things that you'll have to do, but you'll see that court floor pattern that I dropped in that folder appears in that menu. You can select that. Um, you can set the uh, various paint colors outside of the court, um, the inner part of the key, we'll make that a dark blue, and then the outer part of the key, the lanes, we'll make that also a dark blue. You can set the lines, the key the style a couple of different ways right now. There probably will be other options. You can turn the mid-court circle on and off. Uh, I'm going to leave it off because we'll put a logo there. And then let's make the three-point line a dark blue. And now let's add the graphics to the, the court. We'll add a design element by clicking that add element button. We'll choose a file and this is where all the stuff that's in the game already plus the fi files that we added in our user folder appear. You can drag it around or resize it using the, the mouse if you want to or you can use those sliders below in the, in the control. You can tint them. I don't show this here but you can tint the graphics using that tint color. And then we'll add uh, the end court graphics as well. So we'll choose that uh, Charlotte Singers graphic. We'll rotate it. Um, and I'll set the, the Y scale to 0.8 just to kind of shorten the, the text up a little bit. And we'll move it over to behind the basket at the, at the end court. And we'll add one more for the other side. Uh, 
and we can keep going. You could you could add other things, um, you know, logos for the name of the arena or sponsors or uh, something uh, hinting at kind of the uh, Buzz City part of, of Charlotte's court if you wanted to. But now you can see that that team is there in the league and it's ready to play the game. So we can go back to the main menu, go to exhibition game. Uh, choose single player for now and we'll we want to see that new arena so we'll just choose the home team as the Charlotte Stingers and we can go into the game and there we are we are playing uh, a game with the Charlotte Stingers on their home, home court that we just uh, created using the in-game tools in just a matter of minutes. So I thought that was really cool. wanted to show that to you guys. Uh, let me know what you think about that. I think it will make modding just uh, uh, a whole lot easier. So um, would love to hear your thoughts about that. Finally, I want to talk just briefly about where the game stands. I took just over a month completely off recently where I wasn't working on the game at all. I needed the break and wanted to take time as summer wound down to spend a good amount of time with my family. Um, as I've gotten feedback and help from the new community on Discord and, and those who are playtesting the game, part of me wishes I would have tapped that resource sooner. On the other hand, there's now a more direct connection to the player base that I am accountable to. It's been extremely fun, but I do feel like the development of the game has raised up a notch in intensity because of that. Ultimately, that's a good thing, but at the same time, I'm really glad I took the time off before launching into this. I expect the development process will have a little bit more urgency now that there's a community that I'm keeping much more closely in touch with. I don't mean urgency in the sense of anybody making unreasonable demands, but urgency in the sense that uh, other people now have invested some of their time in this project too. I feel like there's some responsibility that comes with that. So the game is in what I would still call a pre-alpha stage. Much of the core parts of the gameplay are there. The game is at a stage where it can be tested. You can play a basketball game from beginning to end. There are no fouls or free throws yet. There are some other features missing as well, but the core game loop is there. It's been about nine months since I first started working on prototyping a guy shooting the ball into a hoop. I've been able to accomplish quite a bit in those nine months and I've learned a whole lot more than I've accomplished. My original thought was that I had planned to be in the final home stretch right now, getting ready for a mid-September launch. I never announced that because I had enough doubts about that timeline to, to keep from saying it out loud in public. It turns out it was a good thing I never made that promise because that really wasn't realistic. I had fallen into a common indie game dev trap of being way too optimistic about how long things will take because the, the prototype came together so quickly. It wasn't really ever possible, not for one guy trying to do all the programming and art, online multiplayer, full franchise mode, and a reasonably decent basketball AI engine. So I've learned. I now know why all of these indie sports game projects take more than a year of work, and multiple years in most cases. There's just so much involved with creating and then polishing a game like this. Even though it's a 2D pixel art game, don't let that make you think it's a small game. Uh, I think this is a very ambitious project, to tell the truth. So when is Full Court Heroes going to be done? I'm not sure. I do believe that with the new support from the Discord community, my pace is going to speed up quite a bit from now until launch, but it's hard to say when I'll be able to get everything finished and ready to go. I'm honestly torn on the subject of early access. There are pros and cons. I'm sure we'll talk about that on Discord at some point, so if, if you have thoughts about that, make sure and join and be a part of that discussion. Or you can leave a comment here. What do you guys think? Do you like early access? Is there a stigma attached to it? Do you ever worry about games in early access getting abandoned before full release? I've also seen some other things, uh, stats showing that early access can actually help a, a bit with overall sales, so I'm still torn about that and still trying to figure it out. But now that others are playing and testing the game, we are much closer to a demo. I feel like momentum is going to really start to build from here. At least I hope that's the case. But it's starting to come together. It, it's a thing. It's real. And I can't wait to get you the game. If you made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. 
please like the video, subscribe, and or leave a comment if you haven't done those already. And consider joining the Discord. Until next time, have a great day. Thanks.